So now we're in the Zeiss LabScope software again, and we're going to do a quick um, live counting in cell confluency uh, using the AI modules. So here we're opened in the software, um, and I have the fast snap on, and this can be done in either the bright field mode or the fluorescence mode, either one. So we could do a fluorescence image. It'll still look grayscale on the screen because it's just a, a grayscale image coming through the camera. Um, so there's no uh, colored overlay, but only your fluorescent cells will show obviously on the screen. So here with the camera settings, usually typically just leave it on auto expose, even in fluorescence. And the most I'll adjust is just this intensity here um, if, if needed. Um, the other part that you could do is go to this histogram icon. I'm sorry, I'm not showing you. That was right here in this adjustment here. This is your exposure adjustments or your acquisition settings. And then this one is your histogram. And you can see the histogram is buried right here in that little carrot. But the most I ever do is just adjust the gamma like this. And then in this other window here, the most I do is just click from, sometimes I'll click from to manual, but usually I just leave it in auto and let the camera and the software do its job. And I'll just adjust the intensity if I want it a little brighter. Um, but ultimately just leave it on auto and let the camera do its work in the software. It does a pretty good job on its own, even in fluorescence uh, with auto exposing. So you don't have to mess with too many buttons. So you have your sample on the screen, you're in focus, ready to take your first count and confluency. We're in the fast snap mode, as you can see from here. So fast snap icon. And I'm just gonna be, and I just have it in bright field right now on the scope. So down at the bottom here, your count icon is this. These are your AI modules. The screen pops up. You'll have AI cell counting, or AI uh, cell confluency. I wanna do both, so we'll check both. You can uncheck whichever ones you don't want, but let's just do both right now. Say okay. And now you'll see right away, the icon changed over here for the snap window for your capture button. This is what I'm gonna to touch or uh, click on to capture the images. And that's all you gotta do. So now that that's activated, um, the way to turn it off is down here at the bottom. And so the only way to turn, to be able to switch modes now with these three dots is to turn that off first. Okay, so just remember that if you can't switch modes, it's because the, the counting is activated and you just turn it off right there. So now we're active. I'm gonna click the count button for the first image. So now it's calculating the cell confluency and it did the count. And you'll see down in the bottom here, it gives you scene one. That's my first image. And the results of that cell count 660 and 51% confluency. And now let's do another one. Let's move the sample a little bit. So it gives us a different image. Capture the picture. <clears throat> and you'll see now it's scene two from that image. And it did the count and confluency. And then we'll do that one more time to get three scenes. You can do as many scenes as you want, as many images as you want. Um, oh, I forgot to move it. We'll do five. So I'll move it a little bit, do another one for number four, and then I'll move it again, do another one for number five. Okay, so you see down here I've got five scenes, or scene five. Now, this is where I'm gonna work for right now. I wanna quickly look at what the data is that I just did for those five scenes. Let's say we're in one dish and I did five images through that dish. Now I want the average of all those cell counts. So I click on this chart and I can go, and this pops up right in the middle. And now I can see the five scenes, the five images I took, each one's individual data and the final average of all five along the bottom. So we've got 278 average cell count, 44% cell confluency, 
in that, let's say, that plate or that dish. Okay, so now I can take this and actually do a snip again. So I'll go down to the bottom, I pinned it to the taskbar down there, do a snip, and save that data off. Pretty simple. And again, that's just a Windows snip tool. Nothing special in the software. <laughs> there is a screenshot, a screen print, or screenshot uh, icon. It only works in certain uh, instances, like right now I can do it. Um, so I did a screenshot of this, but whether that screen is relevant is or not is another issue, you know, or is you know, up to you. When I have the chart activated, I can't do the screenshot. So maybe that's a future, uh, you know, thing that they'll do for the software, but I'm not sure. Um, so whether or not you want to use the screenshot button is up to you. You can find out which, whether it works or not, just try it in each screen that you're on. But that's why I like to just have the snip tool activated here, um, or, or handy tool to use. So now back to this again, uh, one thing to note is when you hit this checkbox, then this bottom box goes away and it's done. It saves everything off. Everything is saved already and it's in the files. But one more thing before I get out of this window and hit the checkbox to move on to like my next plate, uh, my next dish, then I wanna look at this image as a whole. So I can click those um, expansion arrows and now you get one scene at a time and I can see the counts and confluency of each scene. So you can see if I do a close up, see the green dots are the counts, the blue is the confluency overlay. There's a icon down here in the corner with a gear, and that gives you your opacity of those. Um, you can see I'm adjusting them clear or more. And you know, somewhere around 30% is usually about right. Um, for those and you can change the colors of either cell count or confluency however you want obviously you can delete a scene uh, right here and you can click through your scenes so you see if you just click on the line it goes through one two three four five scenes and then back again through the scenes meanwhile over on this side of the page of the screen you have the two count and confluency icons so turn it on, off, on, off, confluency. Turn it on, off, on, off, the counts, you see that? And you can have both on, of course. And then of course, you can have the info button, gives you a quick pop-up of your average for all scenes, and the current view. So that's just another quick way to do it. And if, now, if I click on this arrow up here, that will go back, and I'm back to this live image in the background, and this image that we've originally taken of all these five scenes. So I'm gonna click the checkbox now, and it's done. And it gives me this window again, I can have five seconds to click on that if I want, and it goes back to just a single image of one of those scenes, usually the first one. And you have save buttons, reports, more counting, measurements, all that sort of thing. And then I hit the, the back arrow up in the top left. Now everything is saved in the files. So if you need to go back to it, you can go find it in your files in here. You can change your files and storage spaces. Uh, this is just like Windows. It shows you the location up here where your file is. And that's how you take a single uh, either fluorescence or bright field image and do your counting.